Hello friends, working with electricity comes with the territory. If you're not safe, you're not gonna have a good day. Ready to talk electrical safety? Let's go. In today's Climber Connection, we're gonna cover some of the basics in electrical safety. I'm here with Corey Maness, VP of Operations for True North Management Services. Working closely with Nate, he's helped develop the electrical safety awareness training curriculum. Corey, we know the hazards of working around power lines, but tell us a few of the highlights. Thanks, Sean. Well, you know, working with mobile elevated work platforms like a bucket truck or a man lift, it's important that you maintain minimum approach distance, or MAD very important that you measure that distance using a laser range finder or possibly a fiber stick to make sure that you're keeping that minimum approach distance. When you're working around power lines, it's important to have a spotter, right? Tell us about that. Spotters are definitely important when you're working around power lines or you're working around moving equipment. It's important that you understand the minimum approach distance, but it's also important that you know what the equipment operator is doing at all times. You have to be able to communicate with them directly, and you also have to have only one job. As a spotter, you can't be doing anything else but spotting. Okay, let's say you come across a down power line. What should you do? Well, it really depends on what situation. If you're in a vehicle or on a piece of equipment, you should stay put, don't move. It's very important that you don't get out of the vehicle or get off the piece of equipment. You could get electrocuted. If you're walking and you come across some power lines or you're on site and some down power lines are noticed, it's important that you keep a 35 foot distance away from them and call 911 immediately. You can also notify the electric company, but 911 will do so if they need to. And what about overhead hazards? Well, overhead hazards are another obstacle that you need to be fully aware of, such as tree limbs hanging or a broken tree limb hanging on a power line. It could be a gutter hanging off of a building but you have to understand that those hazards could be down the line and could cause a hazard that could electrocute an individual if they touch a metal object that is touching the power lines. And for workers in this situation, is there any special PPE they should need? Well, it depends on the type of work that they're performing. It's very important that they use what is called a stray voltage detector when they're working on or near power lines. You have to have that piece of equipment with you so you can check to see if any metal appurtenances are live and have electricity flowing through them. It's also important to wear the typical PPE, hard hats, gloves, safety glasses, just like always. Tower techs often install telecom electrical equipment. What are some of the safety rules they need to know in that situation? Most electrical telecom equipment is either NEG 48 volt DC or 24 volt DC. It's important that they test before they touch when they're working with this kind of equipment and understand if there is a live piece of equipment in front of them. It's also important for them to use safety glasses, make sure that they use gloves, and if they have to, they use insulated tools when they're working near these batteries or DC plants. Okay, Corey, next topic, batteries. Handling DC power is way different than handling AC power, right? Well, to handle AC power, you have to be a master electrician or a journeyman electrician in most cases. There are situations where you can be a qualified electrical employee. To handle anything below 50 volts of nominal voltage per OSHA, you don't have to be a qualified electrical employee, but it is important, I think, that your company offers you training on how to perform that type of work correctly. And when you're working near batteries, you always need to understand that there are several different types of cells out there. You can have liquid acid battery cells, or you can have lithium ion batteries or nickel cadmium batteries. All of those batteries have different rules when you're talking about cleanup and trying to protect yourself from them with PPE. Talked about NEG 48. Let's check out this panel over here. Sure. So I noticed in this PowerPoint, you got two rows here. You got a NEG 48 and you got a positive 24. There's two different types of voltages in this piece of equipment in particular. Most of the time you're gonna have one system that's either NEG 48 or positive 24. In this case, there's both. However, you have breakers that are on the positive 24 and breakers that are on the NEG 48. It depends on what type of equipment you're operating. And in this case, you have rectifiers here and batteries here that supply the power to the DC power plant. And what do the rectifiers do? Well, the rectifiers are actually connected to the AC power panel on the wall. And what happens is the AC power comes into the back of the rectifier and it's converted to DC power and then it's sent to the breakers to be able to power the equipment on the tower. So if the crew is changing out an RRU up top, 
What does the ground guy need to do in the power plant to help them out? Well, it's very important that you cut the breaker off first and foremost. Anytime you're working on live equipment, you wanna turn the breaker off so that there's no risk of electrocution. It's also important that you lock out tag out if necessary. But in this case, you turn off the breaker and you allow the technician to do the work that they have to do on top of the tower. So if you have a problem with the power, what's the best way to troubleshoot it? Well, it's important to have a digital multimeter with you in your truck. If you have a digital multimeter, you can troubleshoot the voltage that's coming to the equipment, and you can also troubleshoot to make sure that the batteries are connected properly and the breakers are connected properly. So if the site loses power, how long will the batteries last on the backup? It really depends on the amount of equipment that is installed, but it could be anywhere from four hours to 10 hours. It completely depends on what type of equipment and how much of it is installed on the tower. Probably the number of batteries you have as well. That makes a big difference. Corey, I appreciate you taking the time to school us on electrical safety. You got it, Sean. You can check out the library of training material on the Nate website. That's where you're gonna find the electrical safety curriculum. Always be aware of the hazards when you're dealing with electrical power. That's all we got for today. Thanks for watching and stay safe.